Hello students, welcome to Legacy IS Academy. In today's video, we are going to discuss about three very important and critical atmospheric phenomena which are El Nino, La Nina and Walker Circulation. Now though these phenomena are largely occurring in the Pacific Ocean, they have very strong bearing on the monsoon of India as well. So not only we are going to discuss this in detail, we are also going to discuss that how these affect the monsoon pattern of India and the weather system of the other places as well. So let us try to understand first of all about the walker circulation. So if we talk about walker circulation, it simply can be defined as a east to west kind of circulation or longitudinal circulation that takes place in the Pacific Ocean. Now in the Pacific Ocean we know if you look at the map on the eastern side of Pacific we have South America where we have countries such as Peru and on the western coast of or western part of the Pacific Ocean we have another country that is Australia. So generally in the normal years what do we see that the temperature of the water or the sea surface temperature near Australian coast is higher and the sea surface temperature near the Peruvian coast that is near South America coast is lower. So as the temperature is higher here, water is warmer here, what happens? The air also becomes warm and as the air becomes warm, it rises in the upward direction because its density decreases, air becomes kind of light. Now as this warm and moist air rises up, temperature drops as you go higher up in the atmosphere. This leads to condensation and condensation leads to cloud formation cloud formation further leads to heavy rainfall and this kind of rainfall is what we refer as a convectional rainfall or convective rainfall. So the air is rising up near Australia and then the same air moves horizontally in the upper atmosphere and here since the temperature is low air becomes heavy dense and then further basically sinks toward the surface creating a high pressure zone here. And thus means here we have low pressure on the surface, here we have high pressure on the surface. So <clears throat> naturally the wind will start to flow from high pressure to low pressure area that means from the Peru to Australia. These winds that is flowing over the sea surface also exerts frictional force and this frictional force is responsible for dragging up of the warm surface water from near the Peruvian coast toward the Australian coast. Now as the surface water is dragged toward the Australian coast, here what happens? The cold water rises up along the Peru coast and this leads to decrease in temperature near Peru coast and increase in temperature near Australian coast again maintaining this cycle which become a kind of self-sustaining cycle. Now this circulation that is happening in the atmosphere coupled with the circulation that is happening in the ocean due to flow of wind is what we can call as the walker circulation. That is what it is written here, the longitudinal as we can say east to west circulation across the equatorial pacific region is walker circulation. The cell as we have discussed is driven by the temperature difference between the eastern and western part of pacific which leads to development of a pressure difference that pressure gradient force we can say. So areas of high pressure is forming on one side, areas of low pressure is forming on the other side and this leads to development of this kind of cycle. Now let us understand that walker circulation how it is influencing weather conditions in different different places. So this is the main cell of walker circulation as we have discussed near Australia air rises up near Peruvian coast air is sinking down and then it is flowing like this. However this cell further one part of air moves toward the Indian Ocean and as you can see one part of the walker circulation in the Indian Ocean descends near the Arabian Peninsula and then it flows like this toward east. So that means around Australia, Indonesia, Southeast Asia will have heavy rainfall. While on the other hand, when we are having this kind of a condition around the coastline of Africa, around the coastline of Arabia, you will have low rainfall. Similarly, you will have heavy rainfall around Australia here, low rainfall around North America and South America. And similarly, heavy rainfall is observed on the eastern coast of North America as you can see along the Gulf of Mexico, Canada and these areas because here again wind is rising. So both in the Atlantic, in the Indian Ocean, 
the walker circulation is having influence so it is what we can say it is a three ocean phenomena or walker circulation is influencing the weather system in three oceans pacific ocean indian ocean and the atlantic ocean as well now this is the normal condition that generally exists however sometime due to the regions that we have not been able to properly understand and explain after every 3 to 5 or sometimes even 7 years interval what we observe is the reversal of the circulation that happens during the walker condition so this phenomena is then referred as el nino that means if you look at the walker circulation we have discussed that around the australia wind is rising up heavy rainfall around south america wind is descending and then the wind is flowing like this so this is the normal walker circulation now in the case of el nino what happens is the wind descends two situations are there either from the eastern part of the pacific that is near the south american coast equatorial south america and sinks toward australia that means this circulation that is in normal time like this during the el nino time it will reverse that means now the wind will be rising in this side and then it will be sinking toward australia this will cause heavy rainfall along south american coastline and drought like condition or very low rainfall around south around australia and southeast asia so this kind of condition that develop is called as el nino in other way el nino we can also define it as a development of warm surface current because if you remember in walker circulation i told you near south america as the wind is pushed away due to the flow of the surface atmospheric winds what happens the cold wind cold uh, this ocean water rises up that is upwelling that happens so during the el nino condition that upwelling will stop because the wind is flowing from west to east so there is accumulation of warm water near the equatorial pacific along the south american coast so development of warm surface water along the south american coast after every 3 to 5 or sometimes even 7 years interval is what we refer generally as el nino phenomena el nino basically if you understand el nino means little child it is actually a spanish word so the development of el nino happens roughly at the time of around 20 to 25 december which is also coinciding with the what people believe to be the birth of jesus christ so the coming of el nino is considered to be synonymous to the arrival of jesus christ that is why the time, term that is used is el nino that is little child so again to explain to you again this is the normal weather conditions and this is the el nino like conditions where normal weather condition warm surface water is moving toward australia during el nino condition warm surface water is pushed towards south america and during el nino times el nino years as you can see the temperature of the water along the south american coast is almost 5 degrees celsius higher than the surface water temperature of the australian coast so that is the el nino now one other term that is used and as per geographers el nino mudoki is something that is becoming much more common as compared to el nino so what is el nino mudoki el nino mudoki is also called as the central pacific el nino or so the other name that with which it is referred as dateline el nino dateline because the international international dateline is passing through the central part of the pacific ocean so that is why it coincides around that area or warm pool el nino these are the other three names so as we discussed during el nino generally what you see is the rise of air near the south american coast and sinking of the air or wind near australian coast while in el nino mudoki this rise does not happen in the eastern pacific the rise of the air happens in the central pacific region and as the air rises around central pacific as you can see you will have heavy tall clouds that will develop here heavy rainfall you'll observe here while on both australian coast as well as around the north american uh, around the south american coast will have the sinking of air and again air moves like this so within a pacific ocean itself two cells you can see are forming here rather than one cell that forms in the normal el nino like conditions this is something that is becoming much more common as compared to even el nino as well in other way this is how we can define this is el nino rising near the eastern pacific sinking of air near the western pacific and in el nino mudoki 
rise is happening near the central pacific and sinking is happening both toward the western pacific and the eastern pacific and towards central pacific as you can see the air masses uh, the winds are basically moving in this area because this is your low pressure area so heavy rainfall in the central pacific ocean and suppressed rainfall both towards south america and australian coast is the characteristic of el nino modoki similarly you have la nina which is reverse of el nino and that is why you have la nina modoki so both kind of phenomena you observe el nino reverse of el nino is la nina El Nino Modoki, reverse of El Nino Modoki is your La Nina Modoki. Now we are discussing about the La Nina. So let us try to understand this. Now as we discuss that generally we have a Walker circulation that establishes itself in the equatorial Pacific Ocean. Now after every 3, 5, 7 year, inter, uh, years interval, we have the reversal in Walker circulation which we term as El Nino. And again, after the El Nino conditions begin to end, you have again the re-establishment of Walker circulation. However, after El Nino years when the walker circulation is trying to re-establish itself, the strength of the wind movement as well as the ocean current movement is much more higher than usual. This phenomena is then called as La Nina which is opposite of little boy, it is called as little girl child. So as we can understand what will happen in La Nina, you have again temperature difference between the eastern pacific and western pacific is much more higher. And this is the this is the phenomena that you see is the representation of La Nina Modoki. You have the rise of air near Australia and sinking of air near the Central Pacific, rise of air near the South America, sinking in the Central Pacific, and then you have the movement. Two cells again has formed here. Similarly, one of the cells again enters into the Indian Ocean, and the wind basically, as you can see, sinks toward the central asia or the west asia region and then you have the flow of the wind like this so this entire circulation as you can see here also you can extend it like this so again pacific ocean indian ocean atlantic ocean all these are affected same like el nino by lina as well so if you have to define lina in simple way we can define it it refers to the ensophage that is El Nino Southern Oscillation. Southern Oscillation is a simple phenomena that refers to the difference in the pressure between the Eastern Pacific and the Western Pacific, in which the sea surface temperature are cooler than normal. Okay. If you try to understand, in the El Nino, the sea surface temperature was warmer than normal along the South American coast. So here what happens, sea surface temperature is cooler than normal. Normal means we are talking about the Walker circulation. So the warmer phase of same is called as Elino, the cooler phase of same is called as Lina. The warmer phase where sea surface temperature are higher than normal is known as Elino. A result of interactions between the ocean and wind system, Elino and Lina have almost opposite impacts on the weather events. Obviously, it is understandable because both are creating two different kind of water temperature, two different kind of wind circulation. Now, in Lina, recently one other term was in use that is referred as a triple dip lina. So generally what happens whenever lina condition exists, it extends for a period of one year after that situation becomes normal. That means walker circulation establishes itself. However, in certain circumstances, basically lina can extend up to one, two and three years. So when lina is extending up to three years continuously, that kind of lina is called as triple dip lina. For example, Usual episode as we discussed can be 9 months to 1 year. 2015-16 was a time of Godzilla El Nino. Now Godzilla El Nino refers to a term where temperature difference is much more higher than the even normal El Nino condition. As we have discussed, generally the temperature difference between the Eastern Pacific and Western Pacific is 5 degrees Celsius. But in Godzilla El Nino, this temperature difference can be 2 to 3 degrees Celsius even higher than this. And obviously, if warming has happened to a greater extent in the preceding El Nino years, if the situation has to become normal, that means the cooling also has to happen for a greater period of time and also to a greater extent. And that is why generally the Godzilla like El Nino situations are succeeded by what we can refer as a triple dip line. And that is what exactly we saw between September 2020 to March 2023 we have the extension of Lina or the occurrence of Lina that is continuously for three years, which is a very unusual phenomena, not very, very, uh, this what we can say very rare kind of phenomenon. Now, what can we understand to be the likely impact of Elino? 
so first of all if you look at the monsoon of india monsoon of india is largely becoming weak and you have below average amount of rainfall during elino years this is something that does not happen all the times but generally 8 out of 10 times El Nino is coinciding with low rainfall in India or drought like situation that prevails in India. The reason is very simple that during El Nino, the movement of wind becomes kind of westerly in nature that is moving from west to east. And in case of India, if you talk about the southwest monsoon winds, this is India for example, this is the equator and southeast winds are moving like this, easterly winds are moving like this and it is these wind that crosses the equator and then enters India as a southwest monsoon wind. So basically what is happening during the El Nino years as the overall circulation becomes westerly in nature, we have the weakening of these easterly wind and as these easterly trade winds become weaker, these southwest monsoon wind which are nothing but the extension of these easterly winds also becomes weak and as they become weak what you observe is below average monsoon. Second, obviously, in the Atlantic Ocean, along the United States and Horn of Africa in the Indian Ocean, because here the air is rising up, you will find very heavy rainfall, widespread rainfall, flood-like situation. While in Australia, Indonesia and Pakistan, you will observe a drought-like situation due to low rainfall. So basically, the rainfall is happening at some places in surplus amount, in some places in deficit amount. That is the effect of El Nino. If you look at the map here, this is the map during the month of June to August, as you can see that this area, this entire area that is around Australia, Southeast Asia, Philippines, Indonesia, all these countries are there, plus India. What do you observe? You are observing a dry condition associated with El Nino. On the other hand, what do you observe? Heavy rainfall in the Central Pacific and along the South America, some place will have heavy rainfall, some place will have the warm kind of weather. And on the, this part of Central America, you will observe warm and dry kind of weather. So, dry weather, Southeast Asia, India, heavy rainfall in the Central Pacific, heavy rainfall plus warm weather along the South America and you have warm and dry weather around Central America. Plus, cool and dry weather develops around the eastern part of Australia and around New Zealand plus the southeast, basically we can say southwest Pacific Ocean. So, this is the how we can understand the impact of El Nino on the weather. On the other hand, if you refer to La Nina, obviously La Nina will lead to what? Opposite effect as compared to El Nino. So, we will have very strong and above average monsoon. Region is again same. During La Nina condition, the easterly trade winds become very, very strong. And as these easterly trade wind becomes very strong, again, these easterly trade winds are the one that are basically crossing the equator and then coming in the form of southwest monsoon rainfall. So, stronger these trade winds, stronger will be the monsoon. Stronger the monsoon, higher will be the rainfall. So, above average monsoon rainfall is what you will expect during this time. On the other hand, situations will reverse. Earlier during El Nino, you have heavy rainfall in United States and Horn of Africa. Now, this area will experience low rainfall, depressed rainfall and will have widespread drought. On the other hand, around Australia, Indonesia and Pakistan, now you will observe heavy rainfall and thus you will have flooding like situation. Again on the map, if you try to understand, this is the June to August same time period. This is the La Nina condition and as now we can see, this entire region is having a kind of cool climate and cool climate means high pressure, high pressure means more winds are flowing here. Plus over the entire India, we can see we are having cool and wet climate. Here around the Southeast Asian region, we are having a wet climate, heavy rainfall is recorded here. And then in the Central Pacific, what will happen? Now you will have opposite condition that is dry conditions will prevail here. In the South America and Central America, you will have cool and wet conditions as well as cool condition. That is how we can explain this. And here also on the western coast of Africa, you will experience a cool kind of weather, a high pressure area will develop here. So, this is how we can represent the effect of La Nina in the same time period. Now, recently the question was also raised that how this entire phenomena 
El Nino Southern Oscillation and Climate Change are related. So first of all, we have to understand this lack of understanding of natural variability of ENSO. How El Nino and why El Nino happens, why El Nino uh, leads to La Nina, how, what determines the length or duration of El Nino or La Nina, these are something that is still in a very speculative phase, you do not have a very clear cut idea about that. However, we know that in the recent time, especially from last one or two decades, we are observing increase in the frequency as well as the intensity of the entire ENSO ph phenomena that is El Nino and La Nina. However, how it is related to global warming, the scientists do not have any clear evidence or data to pro provide linkages between the global warming as well as the ENSO phenomena, El Nino phenomena. However, on the other side, we can make one relation between La Nina and global warming. How? We know that during La Nina, we are having a cold sea surface temperature, especially along the eastern coast of South America or eastern, uh, western coast of South America or eastern part of the Pacific Ocean. That means more heat absorption will occur. That means atmospheric temperature can become lower. This is one speculation that La Nina can help in fighting the global warming challenge that the world is facing today. However, this effect of La Nina as per World Meteorological Organization is not going to be enough to neutralize or reverse the impacts of global warming that we are observing on the earth. Its cooling influences temporarily what it can slow down the rise in global temperature but obviously it will not halt or reverse the long term warming trend that the earth's atmosphere is going through and the other associated effect on climate change is something that also we cannot expect to solve by the Lina like situations. That is all for this particular video. I hope you understood the concepts of Elino, Lina, Elino Mudoki, Lina Mudoki as well as Walker circulation and how all of these are related to the monsoon of India. Thank you very much.